Nimrod, Babylon Rising, Part 1. There's going to be many parts to this as I travel through Revelation 17 and 18. But before we get to the rise of Babylon and the Antichrist spirit that Nimrod first embodies, let's talk about Noah, because Nimrod stems from Noah. So Noah... Um, son that was on the ark is Ham, and then Ham has Cush, and Cush has Nimrod. Now, what we do know from King James Bible is that Ham is cursed by Noah for something he saw done to himself by his son Ham. Remember the story? He gets drunk, he's naked, he wakes up, and he sees Ham has done something to him. Well, the only way you could see something's been done to you is by, there's there's evidence, there's a cut, there's a marking, there's blood. You know, I know for me, myself, um, I have been returned from the second heavens hundreds of times in this condition. Marking, a cut, blood, lots of blood. I've had lots and lots of blood loss. And so Noah does not curse Ham, he can't, because... Ham, Noah's three sons, Noah, his wife, his three sons, his three wives, they were all, you know, blessed by God to be saved during the flood. So Noah instead curses Ham's, or I mean, yeah, Ham's youngest son, Canaan. And so let's get a better understanding, a bigger understanding. Let's go to the Apocrypha to understand more about Noah. This is interesting. So once out of the ark, Noah began to occupy himself with the growing of the vine. And you can read in the book of Adam and Eve, the vine came from Adam. But here's what's interesting. What it says here is he became a man of the ground. Now you remember Cain and Abel. Abel was a keeper of the sheep and Cain was the tiller of the ground. The ground is cursed. So remember, God curses the ground when Adam and Eve was thrown out of the garden. So somebody working the ground doesn't play out well, right? He became he became a man of the ground. Now let's read here. I'm reading straight from the book of Noah. And the first attempt to produce wine at the same time produced the first to drink to excess. The first to utter curse upon his associates and the first to introduce slavery. This is the way it all came about. Noah found the vine which Adam had taken with him from paradise when he was driven forth. He tasted the grapes upon it and finding them palatable, he resolved to plant the vine and tend it. On the very same day on which he planted it, it bore fruit. That's a supernatural vine from the Garden of Eden, guys, right? That's a vine from paradise. The same day he planted it, it bore fruit. And he put it in the wine press, drew off the juice, drank it, became drunk, and was dishonored all on one day. So he plants it, it bore fruit, he puts it in the wine press, it becomes juice, he drinks it, obviously it's already fermented, um, he becomes drunk, all of this happens in one day. His assistant in the work of cultivating the vine was Satan, who happened along at the very moment when he was engaged in planting the slip he had found. Satan asked him, hey, what is thou art planting here? Noah, a vineyard, Satan. And what may be the qualities of what it produces? Noah. The fruit it bears is sweet, be it dry or moist, it yields wine that rejoices the heart of man. Satan, let us go into partnership in this business of planting a vineyard. Noah, agreed. Satan thereupon, get this, slaughters a lamb, and then in succession, a lion, a pig, and a monkey. The blood of each, as it was killed, he made to flow under the vine. Thus he conveyed to Noah what the qualities of the wine are. Before man drinks of it, he is innocent as a lamb. 
If he drinks of it moderately, he will feel strong as a lion. If he drinks more of it than he can bear, he resembles the pig. And if he drinks to the point of intoxication, then he behaves like a monkey. He dances around, he sings, he talks obscenely, and knows not what he is doing. This deterred Noah more than did the example of Adam, whose fall had also been due to wine, for the, for the forbidden fruit had been the grape, in which he had made himself drunk. In his drunken condition, Noah took, betook himself to the tent of his wife. His son Ham saw him there and told his brothers what he had noticed and said, The first man had but two sons, and one slew the other. This man Noah has three sons, yet he desires to beget a fourth besides. Nor did Ham rest satisfied with these disrespectful words against his father. He added to this sin of irreverence and still greater outrage of attempting to perform an operation upon his father designated, or I'm sorry, designed to prevent procreation. So here we have Ham is performing the world's first vasectomy. Or maybe it's not the world's first. Did Ham learn it from the fallen angels before the flood? So the, uh, that's how I take. How does he know how to do this? This must have come from fallen angels before the flood. That's just speculation on my part. But he knows how to cut Noah in such a way that Noah can no longer procreate. Sounds like fallen angel tech to me. With the spread of mankind, corruption increased. While Noah was still alive, the descendants of Shem, Ham, and Japheth appointed princes over each of the three groups. Nimrod for the descendants of Ham. Joktan for the descendants of Shem. Phinak for the descendants of Japheth. Ten years before Noah's death, the number of those subject to the three princes amounted to millions. When this great concourse of men came to Babylonia upon their journeys, they said to one another, Behold, the time is coming when at the end of days, neighbor will be separated from neighbor, brother from brother, and one will carry on war against the other. Go to, let us build a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make a great name upon the earth. End of part one.